All right. Do you want to come into this one yourself? Like, oh, I got nothing. I don't- <laughs> <laughs> I've only well, got the go. information. <laughs> Done. Done. How are you, mate? Good, guys. Very good. And you're both doing well? Yeah, you're except for a well. bit of bloody hay fever at the back of my throat, which is fucking up everything I'm doing at the moment because everything I do is on mic. <laughs> That's Melbourne for you, though. You can't have the beautiful weather without having some sort of side effect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. That's all you got. <laughs> you a little gargle, you. That's all. And without further ado, maybe I uh, move on to the home entertainment releases this week. Yeah, why not? The why first not? one is a banger, but I've got to tell you, I am a little disappointed because Roadshow have backfooted on their delivering a Blu-ray component with some of their Warner releases. And unfortunately, it's with a solid film this time around. I mean, they could have done it with any number of other movies, but it's The Exorcist. It's coming out on 4K Ultra HD. It is a two-disc set, two 4K Ultra HD, but no Blu-ray disc in there, which means you don't get any of the documentary or featurettes or anything. You strictly get the films, both cuts, the theatrical and the extended version, the version you've never seen, which we've all seen over the past 20-odd years and wish we hadn't. And you get the audio commentaries on both of those. But unfortunately, the fear of God, all of that stuff is not going to be on this release. Initially, they had pitched it as a three-disc release and Lord knows what happened. And now we're stuck with this this substandard edition, same as the US, except the US get a digital code where they can access the extra content digitally. So look, if you're an Exorcist fan, I recommend probably picking up the UK release because that is a three-disc set. And I mean, there is some gorgeous editions they've released with all number of extra stuff, steel books, lobby cards, booklets, and all sorts of things. But anyway, that one is out this week. I mean, the <laughs> price point is pretty good, though. You can't you can't argue paying thirty bucks for it. And look, if you already own it on DVD and Blu-ray, hold on to it for the special feature content. Yeah. Is um does it contain the uh, the uh, ultra rare audition footage where William Friedkin talk uh, asks a thirteen year old Linda Blair if she <laughs> masturbates? <laughs> wow does that that's does his, that exist ben that's his favorite story he talks about it wow like, he talked about it all the time but that's how she got the part because she's right. like yeah you know, do you mess me of course don't you that was her kind of retort. <laughs> that was her retort that's fantastic <laughs> that's, that's he said that's why he cast her then he gives, her, he gives her a crucifix. <laughs> yes. Well, it makes sense because I, I do recall reading that, you know, he was looking for, you know, a child actor that was like an adult that, you know, would understand the depth of the material and, yeah. you know, be able to do uh, what she did. And, that, and clearly it's probably her career best, I would say. I mean, I love Hell Knight <laughs> and well, uh, you, you Roller Boogie. Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love those movies, but in terms of acting, I don't think it got any better than that. And it, she shot one in Queensland too, didn't she, around the time of Blood Moon? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Dead Sleep, that. was it? Something like that. It was very similar to Coma, I think. that Weren't they, you know, the people were in coma states and they were harvesting the organs or something i don't oh, know i don't remember this one. Oh, she made a slasher like a kind of a like a psychotic slashery type movie with jerome ellers where she picks him up in a bar but he's been like killing women okay inducing women and killing them i Bad. could be completely I'm confusing it and that may in fact be <laughs> the very film well yeah. you know they need to seize the opportunity now and get repossessed out on blu-ray I know. Well, someone in the States was going to do it, and we assumed it was Vestron because they did the original home video release, and it it sits with Lionsgate, but I haven't heard any more news about that. Although, no, actually, I did. I think I might have seen something about Kina Lorber doing it because I know that they were able to sub-license a bunch of Lionsgate titles, so That's, maybe it's them doing it. The amazing thing is that we I had this discussion with Umbrella. We had it all set to go, and then we saw the announcement the director put on saying he just recorded a commentary and done all this stuff. And so we're like, oh, well, if someone else is, is about to release it, we won't bother. And then it just still, didn't Still not out. And, I, <laughs> and at this rate, I don't know if we'll see it before year's end, which is a shame because you could be capitalising on the 50th anniversary of The yeah. Exorcist. I mean, next year's yeah. the 51st anniversary. Maybe... Maybe therein lies the novelty of doing the parody movie on well, the 51st anniversary. Maybe that's the the repossessed anniversary. 
could very well be, in fact, because I think, was it 1989? So that would mark a 35th anniversary if it was 89. I remember is, seeing is it, it at the drive-in when, is a when it came out. an anniversary, though. Like- Look, anything's an anniversary in this day and age where there's <laughs> always a threat of a dwindling physical media market. <laughs> I think we could celebrate the 33rd anniversary of films at this point. I love Possibly that, even the 6th anniversary. I love that that director probably just for his own shits and giggles recorded his own audio commentary and had actually not signed anything. You know, just <laughs> True. Just to try and spark <laughs> yeah. interest in getting the movie released. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's out from Roadshow this week from the Warner catalog. Another title which I typically wouldn't mention because it is that that inferior format DVD, but I feel the need to mention it is that Icon are releasing Sound of Freedom on DVD, which is a pretty swift release from theaters to DVD and I still think it'll stick around in theaters for a little while yet cuz it's got a lot of support. Yeah. And I'm curious to check it out myself. I might Same. just Don't wait to. for streaming because then I can watch it in HD anyway. Yeah. Odd that they're not doing a Blu-ray given that, you know, the kind of content, but it is Icon. They've scaled back operations completely, rarely do any kind of releases. So it's good to see that it is, in fact, getting a physical release in any form, even if it is that inferior format. Moving yep. on to Mad Men. Mad Men's got some great releases this week. They're doing the Shin Ultraman live action movie that's coming out on DVD and Blu-ray. And if it does anything like Shin Godzilla did, uh, it should do the numbers and hopefully means we might get to see some more uh, Asian cinema on home entertainment from Mad Men. Because it's been, a, it's been a while. What does Shin mean? I don't know. I don't know. I should have Googled it because I had the very same thought, but I did not do it. I felt like it was just almost putting like a super in front of something yeah right <laughs> just, just to make it sound even better now we just amazing. look like stupid bloody westerners we do we do but uh look we'll no doubt check it out in good time and we'll come to understand <laughs> it maybe we'll just google it, just google uh, it now. <laughs> an- another release that's coming out from madman another one i'm very keen to check out this is a new nicholas cage one titled the retirement plan I don't know if you gents saw this trailer, but it looked like a lot of fun. It's it's very DTV, but it does look great. It's got Nick Cage doning the long hair, and he looks kind of like a, a little bit like his character from Con Air with the long hair, uh, but he's basically like a washed up, uh, I think he's a washed up hitman or something of that nature. But anyway, it looks fantastic. That's coming out in DVD and Blu-ray, and it's good that they're doing Blu-ray Madman supporting doing these kind of action movies and particularly doing Cage movies because... Cage sells and, you know, it doesn't matter what he does. Like, I mean, for every B movie he does, which he's done quite a few recently, he has something like Dream Scenario, which is getting released in the US in theatres in November, which looks amazing. It looks like a Michelle Gondry type of movie. Uh, So, yeah, but the retirement plan, uh, plan looks at least a bit of fun. And then the last distributor I'll mention that's releasing titles this week on Home Entertainment, and I'll only mention one title, that's Umbrella Entertainment, and they're releasing Godless, the Enfield Experiment on DVD and Blu-ray. Now, rather curiously, JB aren't listing the Blu-ray on their website for pre-order. The other retailers, such as Sanity and Easy DVD, are. And, of course, Umbrella Entertainment have an exclusive collector's edition of it as well, which has some really slick packaging. Uh, I haven't seen the final cut of this movie. I saw a working cut of it maybe over a year ago when it had a different title in God's Care. And it has some really strong performances. And it's it's definitely kind of situated on the more dramatic horror than the, you know, sort of shock element. And, I mean, it's good timing releasing it this week given that The Exorcist is coming out because mm. this is a um, possession film or supposed possession uh, but it's actually a pretty cool film, and it's good to see Dan Ewing play uh, like a dramatic role, not just play, you know, an action kind of hero or a goofy character or um, a surfer for that matter. And speaking of exorcisms and exorcists, did you notice there was a new trailer for The Asylum's new film, The Exorcists? I did see that. It's got I Doug did Bradley see... as The Exorcist. Oh, man. I haven't watched the trailer, but I did see it pop up, and I'm like, yeah. oh my God. Doug Bradley's perfect. The timing's casting. amazing. Like, I mean, it, yeah, it, it feels like... with the exorcist Pope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, I think, you know, I farts have made louder sounds than that movie did. So <laughs> I, I, everyone would be looking Especially at it going, <laughs> what is this a parody of? Is this a mockbuster of something? 
yeah. but yeah, it's interesting because there's a Apple series that's about to launch a you know docu series, uh, the Enfield Haunting, which I feel like I've not only seen a film about this, yeah. I've seen a documentary about this already. The Conjuring Two covered this, and now there's another docu series. But considering it's Apple Plus and their production value, I'll definitely check it out. But everything's capitalizing on the exorcist 50th anniversary and the theatrical release of the exorcist believer at this point yep. in time hey, just to um to backtrack shin uh in the japanese films means new new oh yeah that's pretty lame isn't new it godzilla. really um new godzilla new yeah, Ultraman. it means it's got two definitions true is the one that applies to what we're talking about and god is the other application okay well there you go I mean, it's a shame that they didn't put Exorcist or Demonic Possession in front of it, and they could have capitalised on the Exorcist 50th anniversary also. Well, you still, we're still waiting for Shin Exorcist, so, you know. Oh, true, exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> anyway, gentlemen, that's all the home entertainment releases this week. I have no news for you because it's been a bumper week. There is quite a few other titles coming out this week, but they are on the inferior format, so let's face it, they're just not worth talking about. <laughs> okay, I guess. <laughs> Well, we did just last week. We did announce uh, Monster Fest, uh, just an or Umbrella, I guess, announced the new uh, Monster Fest presents. Uh, yes, Ridge of Predator, course. Yes, uh, yes, which will be out in uh, in uh, December, I believe, this year. Volume two in the uh, Monster Fest presents series, and it's really stacked edition. And again, Umbrella have an exclusive collector's edition on their website with a reversible A three poster and magnificent slip cover as well. Who did the who did the design of the slipcover artwork, Ben? Uh, that was a uh, stand-up comedian extraordinaire, Matt O'Neill. Yeah, ah. it's it's terrific, and the reversal poster has the original the uh, like key art for it that Daniel J. Cross did, or Den- Daniel Daniel J. Cross, and then the reverse is the Matt O'Neill art, and it's the expanded slipcover art. It looks really great. It's a real sort of throwback to. I guess, 80s kind of horror. And then there's one other release since we did mention Umbrella that has been announced for December, and it's George A. Romero's Monkey Shines is getting a Blu-ray release locally. And it's it's got, it's again, it's got some great special features. It's got a commentary track with Romero. It's got a documentary. It's got deleted scenes, an alternate ending, might even have a trailer, lo and behold. But there's a collector's edition too that has a accompanying booklet that uh, has writings by Lee Gambon and this guy. I wrote an essay on Orion Pictures. So that's in that collector's edition. So it's definitely worth pre-ordering. And I don't know what the other business is. It's got some art cards and a poster or something like that, Ben. I it does have um it does have um I want to say original lobby cards are the art cards are the original lobby cards, but they uh they didn't quite fit properly so it's a, a it's a variation of the original lobby card oh, there you go um unique uh, unique yeah they're so they're, they're they're unique uh art cards lobby cards uh and um i forgot to tell you though with, with your essay oh they, no uh, <laughs> it's, it's did make me, <laughs> they did make me change one one line about oh that's all right the the hand because uh <laughs> believe in the essay you basically said it uh it uh, did horrible at the box office and horrible, horrible critically, but it did get uh, Michael Caine a new uh, yes, a new garage, which they they let me keep in the garage part. I just had to say, uh, uh, I just had to say it like it uh, was like something like it wasn't met with the strongest box office. <laughs> like I had to soften it. They made me soften it a little. Just that one line. That's understandable. Yeah. Look, that's 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 fair because I when I wrote it, I was kind of like, oh. I mean, Orion were never terribly successful. They had a couple, yeah. you know, successes, but it was never enough to save the ship from sinking. But you know what? The so beauty it, the beauty of this is it's out there now. People yeah, well, that's it. That's it. <laughs> this is the oral history right here. Tell you what, because I, you, normally I wouldn't say anything like this, but the draconian measures that I've had to go through on these releases means that, like, I can't, I can't say it in the release. I can't mention things that they're like... The amount, of, oh, just the the amount of going backwards and forwards with the uh, with the reps over things like spaces between people's names and whoa stuff like that. It has been I've never I've never had this kind of uh, nitpicking. On the plus side, I don't really need to QC the material because they've done it all for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Great. <laughs> uh, and the amount of copyright I've never had to use this many copyright symbols on a. Uh, 
and I think, oh, that's that was the other change they they made me do is that because you said Oscar, <laughs> I had to trademark the Oscar. Oh, you're kidding! I always whole... hate when I see that, and I yeah. always like, yeah, the whole thing. That's hilarious. Like, this, like, wow, you know, incredible. I know that this Oscar is trademarked. Like, I don't think anyone's gonna. No, <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. If, it, if it slips out, if it slips out in a, in a in a review, does it mean that it, Oscar enters the public domain? Yeah, totally. Exactly. Exactly. No one's going to be cutting their grass, that's for sure. (laughs) Anyway, gentlemen, that's it for me this week. So until next time, stay Stay physical. physical.